Paul, we've just said it feels strange, doesn't it? It feels like an age since we last played a game. Yeah, it does, unfortunately. Um, but it's, it's been a good a good age. It's been a good couple of weeks that we've had because the players have, have done some, some top-up work, so we've got some good fitness stuff into them. And they've also had a bit of time with the families as well, which I, I think is really important. And I know supporters probably don't like listening to that because I think having time with the family is important. We've got a lot of lads up here who don't often go home. Um, we were living away from home, living in our clubhouses or, or in a, a rental that we've got. So I think it's really important. And I've got to say, training's been really good this week. They've come back in and they've had a bit of life in them and they've worked hard and the quality's been good. Now the challenge, we have to take it out on Saturday. We've got to go and do it against Newport. I mean, they, like us, must have been watching the games that have been played and we're still where we were before. But the last time we kicked a ball, that's decent. Yeah, it's been strange, hasn't it? Because I was looking at results coming through at the weekend and thinking, mm, well, it could be fifth or sixth or whatever it might be. And then I looked at the game on Tuesday and I looked and saw it was uh, it, it, it was a, a situation where Bradford were ahead and we're going to drop again. And then I get a text message from a friend in Derby saying, you must be chuffed with the result tonight. And I'd, I'd not even looked at it because I just saw it was Bradford winning. Um, so... It's been a good week, but it's only a good week if you do your own job properly as well. You know, it counts for nothing, and and that's the big thing for us now. We have to go out against Newport in front of our own supporters, who I hope are all bursting to get back in and come and watch us again after such a long period out. And uh, we've got to make sure we're going to put on the performance that gets the result. This is it, isn't it? It's the second half of the season. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. We're we're one game into the second half now. We've got. You know, we've got 22 to go and uh, we've got to make sure we do it properly. And if we can go, I, I want to go better than we have done for the first half because the first half, on average over the last six seasons, will get us just in the playoffs. I think we've got more to come and, and that's what I want to, want to see. I just on this in your first answer, but there must be a sense in that dressing room of being really ready to go for this. I hope so, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, it's been a good week in, in, in one side of it. I think the players have come back in refreshed because they've had some days off at home. And also we've got some new faces in there. And, and I think sometimes that gives a little bit of energy as well. New faces, um, three young lads who are all really keen to impress and really keen to work their way into the team. And, and that can only be good for us if we've got that sort of competition in the group. JK, Jack and Alfie, I mean, they're the three really good, strong additions, aren't they? Well, we hope so. I mean, all, all sign-ins are a gamble. Um, what I would say is we've done we've done lots of background work on them. We've been watching them for for a long time. Um, we've had lists of players that we're looking at and, and inquiring about, and we felt that these were the right ones to go for. And I I just think they add some real good depth to the group. You know, we've got Jack who gives us that that cover on the left hand side as a as a wing back or as a centre back. We've got Alfie who's got good first team experience while being out on loan at League Two and League One. And he's really keen to play a full international, um, you know. So he, he's got something about him, and I think J.K. is a, a, an exciting one for us because he's young, he's really keen. Um, he's been around Crystal Palace's first team over the last few weeks, training with them and being on the bench, and he's really keen to come and get playing and to show everybody what he can do. I think I'm right in saying that you don't really bring players in whatever age to develop or to look at. They're here because they're here to compete for a place. But, well, that's what we need to do. There's no point in me just bringing a player just to develop and let them taste first-team football. They've got to be able to do a job for us. Because um, ultimately, if they don't do the job, it's me who's the fall guy for it. So, you know, great if they, if they can develop as well and, and, and grow as footballers and as people. But they have to be able to do a job, and I see all three of them as being more than capable of doing a job for us at this level. Three done, I have to ask. Are we close to any more? Um, I don't really know if I'm going to be honest. I don't know whether we're close or not. I, I was hoping that we would have had one more in by this weekend. Um, as with all transfers, um, loans, negotiations, all of that sort of stuff, they're never straightforward. They always take forever. You know, I had to to make a trip down to London early this week which isn't easy with train strikes and everything else so um, it, you just got to go through it and you just got to try and I never I've said this to you before I don't bank on it until they're signed and they're in the building um, so even with JK and, and up and we know we had a really good conversation early on in the week and, and all, we'd got to a point everything was fine and we moving along it still don't come into the building till till the Friday and and we get everything sorted. So they take time, um, and we've just got to be patient. And I hope, I hope there would have been one more, 
it hasn't happened so we deal with it we'll get on with it and we'll hopefully get it sorted over the next week and so we do get strong the link we have been and everybody will be thinking when they hear you say one more they'll think they know who that is mm-hmm. we're, we're not in the business of naming it but is that bit of it frustrating when you're trying to do business and, and things crop up and get in the way like that it's frustrating for me yeah it is um because I understand why people do it because a little bit of knowledge they think they've got some power and, and they think they've got a bit of street cred it doesn't help us because as I've said many times we are not wash with money so we, we are you know we're having to really strike deals to get players in um, to, to bring it over the line and you have to try and go under the radar a little bit and not, not, not tip people off that something's going to happen so when you get stories coming out on social media of people who supposedly want to help supposedly trying to support the football club are, are spouting off about stuff it just doesn't help because I know for a fact um, you know players who we are interested in who, and some of these lads who are already in and, and some who are we hoping to get in I know that other clubs have been tipped off and they've now thrown their hat in the ring for them um, not knowing that they were going to be available so it doesn't help us um, and I can't stop it because I know it's the way of the world I know that's how people work they want to be on social media I get all of that it just doesn't help in our situation thankfully it hasn't affected these three signings this week um, I think it's delayed one one other um, but we'll see if, if it doesn't happen can't do anything about it I've just got to keep going and and, and look for somebody else and the reason why we just touch on this subject now in our press conferences as a club is because when we're ready as you've said a number of times we'll let people know and hopefully we'll get to that point having not been interfered along the way yeah yeah that's the way you have to be because we can't again the way the world is that everybody wants to pull out rumours you know I've, I've heard of so many different players who we are interested in I've even heard of rumours over the last few weeks of players from our place that are leaving well they ain't going to leave unless I get a phone call and I've not had any phone calls so you know I, I don't know where these rumours come from I don't know where they start from um, but it happens doesn't it it's been going on I don't know whenever newspapers came out it's started in there I always used to remember reading things in there in, on, on the, the Sunday People or whatever it was the news of the world in my day as a player and thinking well, wow, that's interesting. I didn't know they were interested in me, and there's no truth in it. So, sometimes information is correct, and I don't know how it gets out. Um, I don't want it to get out, but um, yeah, you just got to get on with it. And, and I promise everybody that as soon as there's something to know, you normally get to know the day before, and then it'll come out when it's going to happen. And just to move on from that, you mean you've answered the other question that was going to close that one off about phone calls? You've not had any brilliant or other favourite subjects. Two lads under the knife this past week or so. How are they? Yeah, well, I'm told they've gone really well. Uh, the surgery, Taylor on Tuesday and Ryan Edmondson went under on Wednesday. Uh, they both haven't been back into the club yet. They're both just recovering for this early part back at home. Um, but the, the surgery has gone really well. Uh, we're expecting both players. The rehab time is 10 to 12 weeks. Um, so they're both now, I, I've spoken to both of them and they are both desperately keen to do everything they can to get back as soon as possible um, Taylor will not be able to be out on the grass um, obviously for quite a while but Ryan can start coming in and doing some work and keeping his legs going and keeping some form of CV fitness going a little bit more difficult for Taylor um, but they'll they'll be worked with Chris uh, and with Jeff and with Jamie and fingers crossed they have a good recovery and they're back with us soon and are you fully in the dressing room Ben still a couple of paces into it yeah, um, Amari is tra- well. Both of them have trained really well. They're both back into the full training. Um, I didn't expect it from Ben. If I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be more moderate, moderate uh, training for him and, and a sort of reintroduction. But he's gone into it and he's got on with it. Um, same with Amari. He's trained fully um, all of last week as well. So they're both very, very close to coming into thoughts. Um, Amari closer than Ben at the moment. It's Ben staying with us, and likewise a question on Finn. Have we got anywhere with the situation with Finn? Um, well, well, Ben is staying with us. Um, on Finn, um, I, I hope I'm not talking out of turn here, but Forrest have made an absolutely fantastic gesture to us and said that they will continue doing all his rehab. Um, we don't have to pay his salary while he's injured, but his loan will stay open, and once he's fit, he can come back to us. So we were in a position where we thought he was going to go, and that's him gone 
but he's now he's now available for us once he gets fully fit and I've heard that his rehab is going really really well which doesn't surprise me with Finn I knew he would throw himself into it um, so I can only thank Nottingham Forest for what is a fantastic gesture what they've done um, which massively helps us but uh, what they are saying is that they are absolutely delighted with the way that we've looked after Finn the way that he's developed as a player um, and that can only be good for us that the clubs are willing to let these young fellows come out to us and, and let us help be part of their development So is it fair to say this weekend's selection headache isn't finding 18 it's choosing the 18 Yeah, yeah I think um, I think I've got 20, 21 so there's two or three who are not even going to make the bench um, but that's what I want and, and I hope the players understand that You know, I won't be leaving anybody out because it's a personal issue I've just got to pick the right the right starting 11 and then the right seven to, to be on the bench for us um, I want depth to the squad which we've not been able to have on many many occasions this season um, so this is a lovely challenge for me to have and, and I'm, I can assure anybody I, I won't like doing it but I won't be losing sleep over it because it's what I want I'm going to have to ask you this one as well this is the negative side of, of, of some of the things going on in the background the racist chance that we're under investigation for the flares that we're under investigation for you've said constantly how good our fans are but there's this this little element at the moment that we need to understand what they're doing to the, to us as a club oh without a doubt yeah we can't have it it's um it's not acceptable we, we're not in a world where we need to be doing those sorts of things we're really not i, I just don't I don't get it. Our supporters have been magnificent, really have, since I came back in in February. Um, they, they really have backed us. We've got to nip it in the bud. We, we are, we're better people than that. We don't need to do it. We don't need to be bringing flares in and, and highlighting issues. We don't need to be throwing things. We don't need to be making any sort of offensive chants or, or comments to people. Let's just support the club. Let's support the team because... They, they come in, they pay good money to come and support us. I totally understand that. But all they're doing is that money that they're bringing in, we end up getting taken off us by the FA in fines. It ain't, it ain't benefiting anybody. So let's just be reasonable about it. You know, let's, let's come in and support the team. And I don't even mind booing and, and giving grief to the opposition. That's part and parcel of football. But let's be sensible. Let's use our brains. And I, I just think... You know, the people who I speak to in Carlisle and Carlisle United fans, they're more intelligent than those sorts of things. So let's keep it that way. Great message. Another interesting week in terms of the, the rain, the weather. We've had a, a call. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you'll tell everybody we were in the other night, clearing the place out. Mm -hmm. That's how, how nervous we got about the situation. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a tough week. Um, I mean, it's been, I think it's been all over the country, but, but obviously we, we are all on tent talks when it rains like it does. And, I've got to say on Tuesday night, it's, the, it's my first time I've experienced the flood alert that comes out on our staff info group. So I was actually just going up to bed. Um, I wasn't prepared to watch any more rubbish TV that Jack was wanting to watch. Um, I was going to go up to bed and um, this message comes through, uh, flood alert, can, we, can any volunteers come in to come and clear the ground? So there was a, a, a little team of us who all came in. Um, did what we needed to do thankfully it was a false alarm and we didn't get flooded um, but uh, it was certainly an eye-opener and it's made it tricky makes it tricky for for training and uh, makes it tricky for I'm sure everybody living on Warwick Road were nervous all night wondering what's going to happen but we got through that the pitch looks looks immaculate no issues around the pitch so we just need to get out there let's hope the weather's kind to us between now and three o'clock and, and over the weekend and we don't get much more um, but it was uh, it was a bit of an eye opener for me on my return to Carlisle. Newport, like a draw, they're a very hard team to beat. Graham's got them well organised. Mm. Oh yeah, it's going to be tough. They're coming into us on on the back of four draws, um, good draws as well. Crawley, Rochdale, uh, Wimbledon, Orient, I think it is. Um, it's going to be tough. Graham, I mean, I know Graham Coughlin. He, he played for me at Shrewsbury when I was manager there. He's a he's a captain. He's a strong leader. He's that sort of personality. Um, they will be organised, they'll be disciplined, they'll be really tough and physical to play against. It's a brilliant challenge for us um, we, and we've got to make sure that we use the energy that we've had over the last couple of weeks and take it into this game and start well. And this is the good bit the fans can do, isn't it? Because when they're behind us, it changes this place. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, I think 
I'd like to think the supporters can see that the board of directors are, are trying to back us to stay where we are and maybe even go better. Um, so hopefully they can come in and back us and support us and, and, and give it a really good environment for everybody to play. I know the players are looking forward to getting playing again and especially being at home and we've just got to go and make the most of it and hope that the fans come on a journey with us.